just a very short introduction to the subject of my book entitled The Illness Is the Cure. That subject is what I call life medicine. Building on the work of pioneers such as Victor von Weizsäcker, Medard Boss, Martin Heidegger, Arnold Mindell and others, what I call life medicine is, I believe, the most fundamental revolution in our understanding of health, illness and the human body itself that has ever been risked. Why? Well, one reason is that life medicine dares to suggest a connection between the life of the human body and life itself which I mean the real everyday life, life relationships and life world of the patient as a human being, and by which I do not mean simply their diet, drinking, smoking or any other aspect of their so-called lifestyle. Illnesses are not like lightning that strikes out of the blue. The key message of my book is that people get ill at specific and often highly significant times in their lives and in a specific biographical, social, economic and relational context, that is to say a specific life context. That is why life medicine does not just look for so-called causes of illness. In fact, it completely rejects all causal accounts or explanations of illness, whether mainstream accounts or accounts from different varieties of alternative medicine. Instead of looking for causes, it looks at the biographical and social contexts in which illnesses arise and explores the individual and social meaning of a patient's illness in these life contexts. That is why it is called life medicine. Now, it took a long time for Freud to persuade his medical peers that dream symbols might actually have important and discoverable life meanings and not just neurological causes or some neurological function. And yet, medicine today is still based on a complete rejection of any dimension of life meaning in illness symptoms. Life medicine, on the other hand, sees illness symptoms as no less full of meaning than dream symbols. Life medicine is revolutionary in another new and fundamental way too. That is because it completely transcends the entire institutional, theoretical, practical and professional separation between therapies for the soul or psyche and treatments for the body or soma, between the practice of so-called psychotherapy and the practice of somatic medicine. It transcends the separation because the fact is that even a simple cold or flu is at the same time a state of consciousness and not just a bodily state. Conversely, there is not a single mental or psychological state that is not at the same time a bodily state. For example, states of depression or anxiety are felt and sensed first and foremost in a bodily way as they are also expressed through the body language of the individual. The third way in which life medicine is revolutionary is that it does not merely offer some new, different or unconventional treatment or cure for illness. Instead, it is based on the radical theory, the very title of my book, that, quote, the illness is the cure. 
another way of putting this is to say that illness is our body's way of saying no to particular aspects of our lives our body's way of telling us that we need both individually and socially to change our entire way of being in the world and our way of relating to others from this perspective life medicine sees all illness as no more bad or unhealthy in itself than for example pregnancy indeed it draws a direct analogy between illness and pregnancy for if we explore the life meaning of a particular illness it can indeed help us to give birth to what I call a new body identity that is to say a new and very different bodily sense of who we are in other words life medicine affirms the innate healing value of illness itself in contrast conventional biological medicine sees illness as something basically bad and pays no attention whatsoever to the potentially life-giving and life-enriching meaning of illness symptoms instead medical research simply looks for ways to get rid of illness symptoms and instead of understanding illness in the way life medicine does as a form of pregnancy it is as if medicine sees the symptoms of pregnancy itself as symptoms of a dangerous illness which to a large degree it does an illness for which the only cure is abortion or termination by denying the innate life meaning of illness medicine is essentially life negating and in no way life affirming or protecting it is essentially anti-life it is perhaps therefore no surprise that in America alone medical treatment itself has been responsible for more deaths than all the wars ever fought by America and that even in terms of its own causal thinking research reported in the journal of the American Medical Association itself revealed that medicine is itself one of the biggest causes of unnecessary death if not by now the leading cause responsible for more deaths than cancer and heart disease a medical philosophy whose treatments make people sick and which even kills surely needs questioning the problem is that neither mainstream nor so-called alternative medicine question their own basic philosophical assumptions assumptions which separate the life of the human body from the life of the human being which separate biology from biography and which also separate the sicknesses of individuals from the sickness of society and of our world and planet as a whole long ago Karl Marx recognized that capitalism alienates the worker from his or her own body which becomes simply a means of production to be used like a machine in the interest of corporations for billions of people life is no more than the prostitution of their bodies and minds 
in the service of a corporate employer or boss. In this capitalist world then, it is no surprise that medicine sees the human body as nothing more than a sophisticated biological machine and that the main function of medicine in the capitalist system is to keep that biological machine working in a profitable way. The result is, however, that in this way health itself is effectively defined purely and simply as the capacity to function economically in the capitalist system. In other words, to function in the very system that makes people sick in the first place, but also profits from illness through the corporate health industry. You have a headache that might interfere with your work, then take a pill. That way, both your employer and the corporate drug dealers profit. Conventional biological medicine, in other words, though it claims the authority of a respected and objective science, is effectively money-driven medicine. For capitalism both makes people sick and then makes billions for the pharmaceutical and high-tech health industry. Life medicine is therefore revolutionary also in a social sense, rejecting this reduction of the human body to a working machine and the reduction of medicine to a corporate health industry. Now, the practice of what I call life medicine is something I term life doctoring and a practitioner of life doctoring is what I call a life doctor with the emphasis on life, a life doctor. Life doctors offer a form of counselling for both chronic and serious illness. The methods they employ are very different from those employed by conventional doctors but require even more knowledge and skills than those of a conventionally trained doctor. But these are knowledge, this is a knowledge and these are skills of a wholly different type, not merely technical skills, but human skills. The main instrument of the life doctor does not consist in any instruments of measurement or testing. Instead, the main instrument of the life doctor is their own body, by which I mean their own bodily self-awareness and their own deep bodily sensitivity to what I call the patient's lived or felt body, which is the body as the patient feels, experiences and relates to it from the inside. Ordinary doctors, on the other hand, are paid simply to diagnostically frame a patient's words and experience in terms of a pre-established medical body of knowledge. To do so, they need only look at the patient's body from the outside. For even in so-called internal medicine, when the bo patient's body is scanned or surgically opened up, for example, it is still only looked at from the outside. How the patient himself or herself experiences their own illness or disease, their stress or distress, is something of insignificance to the conventionally trained doctor. The conventionally trained doctor does not ask any questions about the patient's life at all and so naturally no connection is ever made between a patient's illness and their life. The life doctor, in contrast, 
asks first of all about the patient's life and the events or experiences that might, for example, have preceded the beginning or onset of a symptom or illness. The life doctor is also a doctor trained to not only sense and respond to the patient's own inward human experience of their body and its symptoms and to do so in a human way rather than a mechanical way. The life doctor is also trained to place a patient's illness in the larger context of their personal lives and life history as a whole their personal life world as a whole and indeed our sick global world as a whole. In this sense life medicine gives a new and truly revolutionary meaning to the word holism in medicine. Thank you.